what we were really excited about was uh, taking something that was pretty brand new, which was the mobile phone with a camera that people actually wanted to use um, and suddenly making it really social. So making it so these weren't just photos you took and ended up on your camera roll, but ones that you were excited to share with your friends and beyond. Um, and we thought there was a, a way of doing it that was mobile first, that was really fun and social um, and that nobody had done before. One of the things I, I think, I like to think that we did well with Instagram was take something that could be complicated or complex and then distill it into something that people could use every day and, and, and understand. So a couple of thoughts. One is being crystal clear about what problem you're trying to solve for people. So I've seen way too many companies get started that are uh, either, hey, this technology is cool, surely somebody will want to use it, or hey, people are already doing this, you know, using this product, why don't we create something just like it? I think you have to be really laser focused on understanding what problem you're solving for people. For Instagram, it was they, people want to connect, they want to share, but there's no real good way of doing that on, on mobile phones. So let's make that an amazing experience. Um, so defining what that problem is and not listing 10, because sometimes businesses try to solve too much, being really focused on one, two, maximum three, that really define what it is that you know your, your real value proposition is. And then the second piece is knowing when to iterate and when to you know change your mind. You know, with Instagram, we started with a different product uh, called Bourbon, B-U-R-B-N, and it was in the same neighborhood as Instagram, but we realized that we had just made it too complicated. So if you're finding that as you explain your product to people, they look a little confused or you're they're not it's not resonating or uh, you know it's not quite clicking. Your initial instinct might be, let's add more. You know, maybe it's just that we have 10 features and we need 20. And in my experience, that has never been true. It's it's actually, you should take your 10, pare it down to three and make those amazing. And once you've proven that those are important, then build back up. Because if you can make those, the, the simple parts of your product really great and really stand out, all of a sudden people have a reason to use you versus everybody else in the market. What are we holding on to that we just think is important, but actually we our customers wish we would move on from? Um, Twitter went through this for a long time where they were maniacally uh, into this 140 character thing. It was defining their whole company. And finally they asked, wow, that I think that might be holding us back. And you know, they expanded it. Now people can write longer. And I think those things are very easy for you to convince yourself internally that are super um, almost sacred. And uh, part of remaining relevant is always questioning those things. Uh, to be a really interesting entrepreneur, you have to have a science fiction level of vision and, and basically ask, what is the science fiction future I wish existed? I think many things start from building things that you're personally passionate about. I think I've seen entrepreneurs fall into the trap of trying to do some market research, be like, this is a big opportunity, but um, Entrepreneurship is a long game. And if you're not passionate about the thing that you're building, year five will, will feel like, you'll, year two will feel like a slog, much less years five through 10. So um, figuring out what it is that really, you know, the problem that you can't stop thinking about, you'll know it when you feel it, right? You're like, you go to bed and you start thinking about the problem. You wake up and you're excited. You wanna tell your friends about it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's something that only you are gonna use, but something that you, you feel like the world is worse off if it doesn't exist in the world. So rather than uh, set out with the goal of, I wanna be an entrepreneur, I wanna start a company, set off with the goal of, there is something in the world that I wish was different. And my best way of contributing to that is to start a company or to create a product. We talked about small businesses earlier. If you asked me, you know, 15 years ago, can you create a storefront? completely digitally, I might have said, no, you probably need people to be able to come in the store and, and, and look at things themselves. All of a sudden, you know, that that's changed. There's Instagram has created uh, basically virtual storefronts for people. And so uh, you can, if you stay, if you stand still, what will leave uh, both the technology and people's expectations will just leave you behind. What is the trend that is just around the corner? I think this is the thing that we did uh, uniquely well at Instagram. We weren't trying to invent spaceships. We weren't trying to go to the moon. Those are great goals, but for other entrepreneurs. Uh, we were always asking, what is just around the corner that if we do it right, will just become completely universal? And we did that with photos and we did that with videos. We did that with stories once we adapted it. So that's all the pieces where you have to look ahead and say, what is just about ready to explode if we just 
create a really great product around it. I think we created something where folks were expressing themselves in a way they were really proud of. And what that meant was that they wanted to tell their friends about it. So when you think about Instagram in the early days, you know, you, you had people who were buying phones, but they would take photos and be like, oh, that looks okay. It doesn't really look like what I felt like. It just looks like an okay version of that. And with Instagram, what we tried to do, you know, at first with the filters and, and then with other features is let you feel like, wow, I created something that I want to show other people. And that is a very, very basic human instinct, right? Like, I mean, even a child likes to draw and then show, you know, what, they, what they've created to you. Oh, this is the adult version. And that is a really powerful instinct. And I think that was a huge component of our growth was that people uh, would take photos, filter them, edit them and say, I want to show this to the world. I made something I'm proud of. And, and if you can help people create something they're proud of, that's the, the huge growth driver. Being really thoughtful about maintaining that simplicity. So, um, you know, even when we had a million people using Instagram, you have to think, wow, but there's like a billion people that have never used Instagram. How do I make sure when those people join the platform, it's still great and it's still simple and it's still easy to use. How do I always try to understand like how the next person is gonna come in through the door? I think a huge lesson is you don't need a large team to get world changing things done. You know, we launched Instagram with two people, me and my co-founder, and that's all, all we had when we, we went out to the world. Um, uh, two years in, we had uh, 30 million people using Instagram and our whole engineering team was four people. I think that the, continuing the trend of 2020, which is, you know, um, it was a very, very difficult year for, for most people. And even in that, we saw a lot of innovation and in, in ingenuity, you know, around dealing with problems, around wanting to be helpful to, to the world, around, um, you know, finding new ways of, of adapting your business. And in some cases, that might have been the first time a business had to rethink itself in decades. You know, maybe it was a store with physical presence that had to understand how to go online. To keep your whole life in balance, even as you're driving really hard to some goal. I look back at um, even my physical fitness, you can get away with this when you're 24 years old and less so as you get older, but um, just uh, it's easy to fall into the trap that if you're working, I don't know, 12 hours a day, that 13 and 14 hours would be even better. But I have learned since that I really do my best work when my life is really in balance. That means getting outside. That means, um, you know, making sure that the relationships in my life are, are, are um, sort of well cared for and, and, and well maintained. It means meditating. It means all these things that make for a holistic human being. While in the short run, it can feel like that extra hour is going to be productive. In the long run, I actually think it makes you a, a less complete and less uh, creative individual. So I, I, I wish I could have gone back and told myself that. I think it would have uh, uh, probably made me a little bit more balanced at the time. We got advice early on from one of our investors that your company will break every time it doubles. And what he meant by that and what I think we really experienced was the little things that you take for granted stop working as you grow. So when everybody's around one table, as we were at the beginning, everybody's on the same page because you can hear each other. All of a sudden we're in two rooms. That sounds like a minor change, but all of a sudden that team didn't hear about this change happening. So um, you have to treat your company as itself a product, as itself a uh, project that needs constant tuning and evolution. 